So now we're going to go over tools that you can use to facilitate discussions and record those discussions and then you can then go and edit those files later. So the first one is the one that we're using right now, so Teams. So Teams um, has a recording feature which we're using at the moment. You can use Skype as well, but as we discovered when Kevin and I were sort of testing this out, Skype um, has a few limitations which we'll discuss later on. And the other option is mobile phone recorders. So there's a lot of apps that you can use that you can download and they will record calls. So with all of these tools, um, there are limitations. So um, the limitation is that it will only give you one audio file to work with. So that audio file, um, it just means that if you do have any people talking over each other, um, it means that you can't really separate those audio files and you can't really sort of mute one person and have the other person talk. So just be aware of those limitations when you're facilitating group discussions. So we've made some videos for you guys. So we won't actually play them in this webinar, but if you wanna go ahead and play them in your own time, these videos just describe how to record using Microsoft Teams. So as I mentioned, it's available to all RMIT staff. You can record using a Mac or a PC and there's just a minimum of three participants required. So you'll need at least three people in the invite. Doesn't mean that you need them all online at the same time, but the recording button won't show up as I discovered <laughs> yesterday when I was trying to record a discussion with just me and another person, that that recording button won't activate until there's at least three participants in the conversation. One of the great things about Teams is that you can invite people who aren't at, within RMIT. If you did want group discussions from people who aren't um, at RMIT, this is a great option. If you invite them in your calendar, they'll just receive the join Teams meeting. Invite, you don't actually need the Teams application. So I'm not using Teams on my computer, I'm using Teams in my web browser. So that means that there's no software that needs to be downloaded in order to use Teams, which actually is a big plus because I know Zoom, you need to download something, same with WebEx and all these other kinds of apps. Um, so that's why this is probably a, a good one to use. Right, so a couple of things to note here is that um, when you do send uh, an invite out, um, it is ideal that your recipient accepts the invite. There's a possibility that they may not see the join Teams meeting link unless they've accepted the invite. So that's one thing to look out for. The second is that I've put in this little graphic here because um, Teams, you know, like a lot of other softwares, tries to get you to download the software, but you don't really have to, which is why uh, we've recommended here that uh, your participants pick join the web app instead. So that would simply just open the Teams interface on the web and you'd be getting into the meeting as a, as a guest. Thanks, Jen. Yeah, thanks so much for that, Kevin. That's a really good point. So what you might want to do, and we'll just recommend this with whatever you want to use. So we'll show you a few other tools, but with whatever tools you want to use, you might want to consider preparing some kind of document for your guests um, that goes through similar things that we've just mentioned so that, you know, they don't have to download the software. You can just say, click this joined web instead. That can be something that, you know, you might want to prepare when you're thinking about the experience of the people that you're going to interview or, or talk with. So, I mean, I've certainly done that for a lot of the video stuff that we've we've done. It's just, it just puts them on a better footing as well. You don't want to just be, be bombarded with, you know, technical issues. Like there will be some, you know, whenever you're using new technology. So just moving on now. Um, so this is a video that you might want to watch. It just goes over how to actually access the recording after you've finished the Teams recording. So what happens generally is after you've finished a recording, you'll get an email from Microsoft Stream and it will say your video is ready. So you can click on that video link and then you can download the video. So the other thing is you can um, extract just the audio. So if you don't want to use the video, in that video on this slide, I've actually gone through and shown you how to just extract the audio only. So this is just using QuickTime, but there are many other ways to do it. But uh, that just goes over sort of what you do after the recording. Uh, so Kevin, do you want to jump in? 
Uh, yes, I did. So as Jen said, Microsoft, uh, you, you, you will get an email uh, telling you that the Microsoft uh, stream recording is ready for access. Now, the person who gets that email, however, is the person who created or initiated the meeting. If by some chance another person who was at that meeting wanted to access the file, uh, the recording, you'd find that recording in your Teams chat area. That is, for example, we're having this meeting right now and we're conducting a chat on the right hand panel. Uh, that chat then subsequently gets saved in your Teams interface. And in your Teams interface, if you check your chat area, you will find that uh, if you find the chat that you've actually had during the meeting, you'll find that the recording has embedded itself at the end of that meeting. So even if you were not the person who initiated the meeting, but you were part of that meeting or part of that recording, you can access the recording there. Oh, great. Thanks for that, Kevin.